Hey, welcome back to Barley and Hops. We're getting ready to run the reflux still. We're going to do this step by step, so from the beginning to end. Uh, I've already gone through the other video for um, the introduction of what the components are, where they look like, where they fit, and how they go together. What comes with the with the uh, mighty mini? This is a three gallon. Uh, I'm using the uh, induction cooker again, uh, as I did when I was making beer, because this is just a three gallon pot. So. I, Look, if I was using an 8-gallon pot, you'd have to be on a 15 to 1,600-watt hot plate uh, because of the mass uh, or a turkey fryer. And then, of course, I'd be doing it outside. Don't use a turkey fryer inside. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll up some uh, copper. And uh, this copper is the copper mesh that we talked about earlier. Uh, I got a lot of blowback when I didn't mention the copper in one of the other videos. Uh, one guy wrote and he just said, you know, where's the copper in the column? If there's no copper, it's undrinkable. Well, th there is a belief. And there is some data that supports that copper inside the column when you're running a reflux, even if you're running a pot still, uh, that there is some value out of that. It removes some of the sulfites or sulfates uh, that are produced. Uh, but there are people that will also tell you they will confound that opinion. Uh, the data is not so scientifically uh, exact that uh, it says that you can't use it or, or you have to use it. If you don't use copper, uh, trust me, in my opinion, if I use copper, I don't know. If I don't use copper, I don't know. But I put copper in just because it's a great medium for my distillate and my vapor to start to uh, condense on and then recondense the most volatile substances rising through the column. So we're going to add the column. And you'll notice I've already, I've already added the reflux tube that goes from the exit of my condenser to the import of this jacket. So here we go. We'll connect this, and then all we've got left to do is to add the thermometer so that we can track the head temperature. And while I'm hooking this up, let's talk about temperatures. First of all, methanol. Methanol comes off at 145 degrees at sea level. Ethanol comes off at 179 degrees at sea level. There are some differences in those temperatures, but that's a great guide. So your methanol will always come off first because there's nothing you can do about it. You can't get to 179 without hitting 145 first. So that's why you always collect the first two ounces on a five gallon batch. There's more methanol in a fruit based mash than there is in a grain based or in a sugar wash. Almost none in a sugar wash. Georgia's recommendation is, hey look man, make it a habit. Always throw away the first two ounces. Uh, and we'll even show you how to test that. Just look, it's, I'm even going to show you, I'll just tell you. Just start collecting it in a small cup and light it. If it burns yellow, it's methanol. If it burns blue, it's ethanol. That's a good point for you. All right, we're here. We're going to add the uh, bung that goes to the very top because we're going to start tracking the temperature. And when we add our thermometer, you always want to make sure that the thermometer is measuring the temperature at the exit port, which is right here that goes into your condenser. Where you measure the temperature is always going to make a big difference to make sure that you do it the same place in the same way each and every time. Uh, because if you measure the temperature too low, uh, you'll stop before it gets warm enough because it's going to be warmer at the bottom than it is at the top, or at the top than it is at the bottom. So you always want to make sure you're measuring at the same place each and every time. So there goes my bung. It goes in there, and right now we're at 85 degrees. <coughs> Getting ready to hook up the water. We're back. And the exit port. We're, right now we're at 164 degrees. And what I've got is uh, I've already been through the 145 range, and you can see I'm starting to get drops of distillate coming out. So my methanol is already running out. And I've got ice water in the bucket with a small pond pump. And what that's doing is that's actually pumping ice water into the bottom of this condenser, right out of the top of the condenser and through this column. This is a, a jacket that goes around. And I can feel that's cool. And that column is absolutely scorching hot. And then my uh, discharge line runs right back into the bucket. So I'm just recycling that same water. We're at 171 degrees. And you'll notice now that I'm starting to get some drops coming out. What I'll do is I'm going to collect about two, well, almost, I'll probably collect about two ounces of that because I know that that's my methanol. Uh, it's coming off, and then pretty soon we'll start running the ethanol. And that oh, yeah, it's pandemonium. This goes to show you that you have to keep your eye on things. I'm now trying to clean up a mess 
Oh, uh, you know, I thought I'd get myself, I thought I would get ahead and, and show you what was going on, but then my hose popped out of the bucket, water went everywhere, so we're right now at 174, 175 degrees, so we're really, really close. You can see the methanol's come off, um, getting close to about two ounces. Uh, I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, well, look, we've got a ways to go. It's gonna take a while. Um, look, I hope you enjoyed this, ouch. <laughs> Uh, we, we run a reflux still today, so we'll see you on the uh, on the next edition of one of our videos. Thank you.